Hi everyone, my name is Nikki. I'm a registered veterinary technician here in Southern California, and this is part two of how to create a homemade dog food recipe using Balance It. So our previous video, we talked about setting up the recipe, what Balance It is, and all that jazz. So if you missed that previous video, you can go ahead, I'll link it up above so that you can check that out. But we're gonna go ahead and continue with the matching game that we started to create the recipe. Now I do want to kind of give a disclaimer here. We are gonna be going through the back end of creating a recipe using formulation software. So if you're into learning about that kind of stuff, that is what this is. Um, if you, I honestly usually recommend clients if we're doing something like this on a consult call that they follow along with me so that they can understand what's going on. So if you're interested in learning how to do diet formulation using Balance It, I would suggest to pull up Balance It along with this video so that you could follow along in this process. But what we are going to do is go ahead and match the Purina Pro Plan recipe that we kind of put together last time. The idea being that your dog is already doing good on this kibble recipe, but you want to transition to fresh food for whatever reason. So we're going to create a similar recipe just using fresh food ingredients to hopefully allow for a more smooth transition. Then if we want to change up composition or ingredients later, we can definitely do that. So this is what we are looking to kind of match using balance it. And we're going to go ahead and do that today. So I'm going to toggle over on my screen to the easy recipe generation software. So this, if you go to balance it.com is going to be what pulls up. Um, the easy recipe generator software has these different types of columns that are nice and color code coded, perfect for our visual learners. Um, you can find all protein sources here, carbohydrates, fats, vegetables, and fruit. Um, for this recipe, we will also be using the surf search box up here. The search box is what pulls from the USDA database directly. Obviously, there's thousands of options in the USDA database, so it's kind of hard to include them all in this beautiful visual format. So some things you will actually have to search for, and we are going to be doing that in this tutorial. So from the recipe that we used last time or put together last time, we are going to use our main protein source is going to be chicken and then chicken organ meat. So when we look here, we have a lot of different types or options when it comes to chicken with creating a recipe. We have chicken breast, chicken thigh, chicken ground. If you go into the search box up here, you can even type in chicken and it's going to give you a whole bunch of options. Now, there's some key differences composition wise that I want you to keep in mind with different types of protein sources. Different protein sources are going to have different types of amino acid concentrations depending on fat content and also what cut the animal of the animal it comes from. So for instance, with chicken, we're looking at dark meat versus is light meat. Dark meat tends to be higher in iron. Light meat tends to be higher a little bit in B vitamins, also tends to be lower in fat. The darker cuts of meat tend to be higher in fat. Skin on versus skin off is going to change your fat composition as well. For chicken in particular, chicken breast, if I'm looking to create a recipe that's really low in fat, is usually what I reach for because it's going to be my leanest protein source. Chicken thigh is less lean. It's also higher in different vitamins and minerals than chicken breast is. So if I don't need a lean recipe, I tend to go towards chicken thigh. Now, logistically, it's much, much easier to use ground chicken if you, say, don't want to have to deal with maybe using a food processor or something to break up the um, chicken or something like that into little bite-sized pieces, or you don't want to have to worry about chopping. Um, so ground chicken can be an option. However, composition-wise, grocers tend to change a lot on their ground chicken. So some grocers will have it really lean, other ones that will be really fatty. And then there's also sometimes preservatives that are added into the ground chicken because ground chicken allows more exposure for things like salmonella to come in. So they, I find that ground chicken, I tend to stay away from unless we need to be really time effective on creating a recipe to cook. If there's any way I can get around using ground chicken and go with like a whole meat instead, I usually will go ahead and do that. Now, as far as chicken breast versus thigh, skin on versus skin off, you would skin on it's going to be higher in fat, but also the skin itself is going to be high in essential fatty acid called linolytic acid. So linolytic acid is found in the skin of poultry. So if you need or you want to get your linolytic acid from the meat itself, rather than adding on additional oils, which is what we're actually going to do in this recipe, you may want to actually go and do a search up in your USD database for chicken thighs with the skin on. 
The one thing that I will say that's kind of a logistical nightmare, if you've ever gone to your grocery stores in the US, you know that all the skin on chicken all has bone in it. That means that you're going to actually have to debone it in order to feed it to your dog because you can't uh, feed your dog cooked bones. Um, that's dangerous. So you're going to have to debone it at some point. For me, because I have bigger dogs, deboning a whole bunch of chicken thigh is just, it takes a lot of time and I'm not really looking to do that. I'd probably rather use an oil instead that, and I can have more control over the oil being cold versus being heated and um, processing method in that sense. But it's your choice of which one you want to go. If you need a really cost-effective recipe, a lot of times using chicken thigh with the skin on is going to be the most cost-effective way to get chicken within a recipe. You'll just have to debone it, which is going to be frustrating. But for this recipe itself, since we have a recipe that is higher in fat, we're going to go ahead and choose chicken thigh, especially since we already have a oil that is high in linolytic acid. So we'll probably meet that requirement in other places. We don't necessarily need to get it with our chicken. So I'm going to ch pick chicken thigh here. Now for our other main protein source, we had chicken byproducts within the diet, but we're choosing instead chicken organ meats, which is what byproducts are. Now chicken organ meats within the USD database, we have chicken liver, we have chicken heart, and they come in different forms. I usually use the simmered one because it's going to be the more in fat than the pan fried one, uh, just because I like to keep the recipes not too crazy high in fat. Um, so I'll choose chicken liver. You can also search on here for chicken heart. So chicken heart is on here as well. And those can be simmered within your recipe. I find that both uh, chicken heart, when you simmer it, it tends to be nice and moist. Same with the chicken liver. It's not very tough or anything like that. And you probably need to grind it up afterwards. Other things that we had in our recipe, if we look over as far as ingredients, carbohydrates, we were gonna use either a brown rice, a wheat or wheat pasta or wheat bread. So we're gonna go ahead and use find brown rice on here. And then we're gonna use a wheat pasta. Um, the reason why I'm choosing pasta over bread is just because I find that it's more palatable for some dogs. Some dogs do prefer bread, but the ideal or at least the nutrition between the two isn't significantly different. They're both a wheat-based product. Now, let's toggle over to our recipe again. Our oils, we wanted to use a sort of safflower oil and then Nordic Naturals, which is our source of omega-3 fatty acids. So Nordic Naturals, omega-3 pet. And then we're going to find safflower oil on here. Toggle back. And then our secondary proteins, which are going to be smaller portions of our recipe, our hard boiled egg and some type of vitamin D omega-3 fatty acid rich fish. So I'm going to go ahead and do a hard boiled egg and salmon. Uh, you can choose whole egg. The only thing or the reason why I don't usually use whole egg within a recipe is because it tends to be higher in fat and eggs are already high in fat. So I like to kind of keep them lean and I go with hard boiled eggs. So I'm going to search the USD database again. And if I put in hard boiled, it's going to come up with hard boiled eggs. I use the balance it version because it's been adjusted for the cooking process a little bit more. Then finally, we're going to add in the fish so we can go on here and find salmon. And then uh, we can start by creating our recipe. So it's really that simple if you want it to be as far as getting your first recipe. So you press create dog recipe. And then it's going to come up with different compositions. Now we are going to take it a step further. So this will give you balanced recipes, but it's not going to be the same composition as necessarily what you saw with the Purina Pro Plan. So this one was 26% protein, 38% fat, 36% carbohydrates. If we look at these different compositions, using the same ingredients doesn't necessarily mean that the composition is the same. And I'll go ahead and just show you guys that real quick before we move further. So if we look at C nutrient profile, it's going to show us that this recipe is 33% protein, 52% fat, and 14% carbs. Versus if I click out and go over to see nutrient profile here, this is a high carb recipe. So this one is 18% protein, 29% fat, and 52% carbs. Neither of these really fit the macro composition that we are looking for within this recipe. So they aren't really our ideal fit. However, they are balanced recipes. So if you didn't want to do any more logistics and you wanted to do a very slow transition, you would probably pick either of these and be okay with your transition. But to get the smoothest transition, if your dog's doing well on a recipe, I usually recommend to match it. Now to do that, you're going to go ahead and go to edit. 
And the first thing that we're going to edit is make sure that it's edited for our dog's caloric needs. Now, our dog's caloric needs here are about 900 calories. Now, right now, if you look below, it says as a 35 pound dog, our dog was going to require on average 891 kilocalories per day. So that's how much it's formulating this recipe for. Now, if your dog isn't 35 pounds and they're eating 900 calories a day, say they're a 50 pound dog, know that metabolic needs or how much your dog needs on a caloric basis each day in order to maintain its weight will range by a lot. So a resting metabolic rate for a dog can basically starts at a baseline and then it increases based on activity level and in individual metabolism. So there's about a 50% swing either way, as far as this number is concerned. So 600 calories might still be well within the range for a 35 pound dog. And I will go ahead and I can link a blog post below that shows you how to calculate your dog's caloric needs. But in this case, we are matching how much our dog was already fed, assuming that our dog is at an ideal weight already. So they're getting adequate calories. So we want to make it about the same. So in this case, we're already right around 900 calories, but if we wanted to be like very, like get it really close or closer towards 900, you could put 35.5 and it's going to put 900 calories per day on there. Then down here, you're going to press rerun auto balancer based on the edits above. Now, when you do that, it's going to go ahead and recalculate the recipe for the caloric needs for your particular dog. Now we are going to go in and edit composition. So edit, and you can slide these toggles here. So if you slide here, let's look at the composition again. So we're looking for 26% protein. This gives you the percent protein. We're going to go to 26. And then the fat percent fat we're looking for is 38. So we can go ahead and slide the percent fat to 38. And then we're going to press rerun again. Now we can click see nutrient profile. Now this recipe matches the composition, the caloric needs of our dog. So, and it also matches the ingredients that we chose for this matching game. So if you would like, you can stop here when you're formulating the recipe and it's going to pretty generally match what your dog is being fed if they are currently being fed that prenopropylene diet. Now, personally, I don't like weird numbers. Like I, I know some people don't mind seven eighths of a teaspoon, but for me, seven eighths of a teaspoon is very difficult to measure. So if you're like me and you don't want to have to deal with weird measurements like that, and you'd prefer it to be rounded, you can actually go in and edit it more. The other thing to keep in mind is that this, when it recalculated, went above 900 calories per day. So it recalculated at 955. That might be too high for your dog. So you may need to make a adjustments based on that. So I'm going to go in and actually edit individual ingredients. Now this can work out great, or you can completely mess up your recipe and you're going to have to start all over. So when you go into here, you can press advanced option, edit ingredient amounts manually. Then you're going to go in and change your individual ingredient amounts. So I don't want to have to deal with three eighths of chicken thigh. That's just not going to be something that I can measure. Well, you can measure it in grams, which would be much easier, but I like nice rounded numbers. It's just like a pet peeve of mine. So I'm going to put two on here for liver. I'm going to go ahead and probably decrease the amount of liver within the recipe. I find in general that balance, it tends to go high on organ meats and most dogs do well with a little bit lower within their diet. Um, as far as classification goes on organ meats, liver is a secreting organ. So it's going to tend to be a little higher in things like vitamin A, copper, um, and other vitamins and minerals in comparison to heart. Heart is going to be really high in things like B vitamins and certain amino acids. It's almost like a muscle meat rather than an organ meat, even though it's technically an organ. So I'm going to actually put the heart higher within this recipe. Then for hard boiled eggs, it's just a general thing to know with hard boiled eggs. 50 grams is going to give you one large egg. So whenever I make recipes, I tend to round it out on some way to be like half an egg or a quarter of an egg or a whole egg, just to make it easier on me when I'm creating my recipes. 50 grams is going to be 1.75 ounces. So if you wanted one egg within your recipe, you're going to do 1.75 ounces. Now with salmon, salmon tends to be very high in vitamin D. 
I like to keep salmon a little bit on the lower end. I want it as a source of omega-3 fatty acids. It's a great source of protein and also certain B vitamins. That's great. That's why we want it in the recipe, but you don't really need it very high. So this is about at one and a half ounces. I'm going to go ahead and decrease it to about an ounce. Then over here on brown rice and the spaghetti, I don't mind that it's on one cup here, but I do know that one, this recipe was a little bit too high already in calories. And two, um, we already increased the amount of protein within the recipe as far as this chicken thigh. So I'm probably going to want to decrease somewhere as far as carbohydrates. So I'm going to decrease the spaghetti and make it three fourths of a cup instead of one cup. Now over here on the oils, I tend to find the balance, it does, goes pretty high on oil. Um, instead of using different things like using the organ meats or using the protein sources as a source of oil, they tend to go very high on these oils instead, which honestly, it can be a cost thing for some people. But for me, I rather kind of do a moderate ground of a whole bunch of things being high rather than just one category. So each five mils of Nordic Naturals is one teaspoon. So if you want something that's easy to measure, one and a half teaspoons is gonna be 7.5. That's gonna be probably easier to measure than nine and three eighths of a teaspoon of a um, milliliter. That's gonna be near impossible to measure. So I'd round it out for yourself. If you choose the small breed dog Nordic Naturals, it does come with a dropper that measures by mils. But if you do have a larger breed dog, like we're making a recipe for 900 calories, which is probably a medium to a large breed dog, um, um, you're not going to be getting the small breed dog dropper of Nordic Naturals. You're going to get the big one and it's going to need to be measured in probably teaspoons or by weight. Now, as far as safflower oil is concerned, we're just going to round this. So I'm going to go to 1.5 here to make it easy again to measure. So we're going to keep these at a one-to-one -one ratio. Now I'm going to go ahead and click rerun auto balancer based on edits and see nutrient profile again. Now, with this new recipe that we've created, it's closer to the 900. It's a little lower. So if you do want your dog to be like right on the dot as far as 900 calories per day, perfectly there, then we can go ahead and increase our values a little bit. But as far as composition, it's right on what we're looking for with our recipe. So 28, 36, 36. This one's 26, 38, 36. It's pretty similar and our calories are pretty similar. We could probably go a little bit higher. Now, the other things that I wanted to show you within this recipe, other than finagling with it so that it's exactly perfect, because that's what OCD makes me do sometimes, is that you can actually get very specific nutritional information on this print out or on this sheet here. So the first thing is it's going to actually on the bottom tell you how much balance that you're going to add. So this is the balance at canine. This is the black labeled one that we talked about. If we want the white labeled one, which is the balance at plus, I will show you after I get out of the screen where to find that because it's not on the screen and they are different amounts. Um, the other thing that you can do if you are looking at balance it and you want more information, say you want to know how many deficiencies are within a recipe, you can say, go up here and say, see without supplement. And then scroll down, and these are all the essential amino acids, vitamins, minerals, fats that dog needs. And you can see that this recipe, if you provide no supplementation, is going to need choline, calcium, copper, iodine, phosphorus, potassium, and zinc. So it has multiple deficiencies. It's about seven. Now, if you didn't have any organ meat in this recipe, it would probably have close to 16. So that organ meat is actually filling in a lot as far as nutritional needs for your dog. If you wanted to make a minimally supplemented recipe, you would probably need either a larger inclusion of organ meat, or you may need different ingredients altogether. So you might need to actually add on chicken gizzard as well to this recipe, or add on chicken giblets. You may need some oysters, things like that would potentially make this a more minimally supplemented recipe. Now, on here, if I click away, there's another function on here to look at other supplement options. So if you look at these double arrows on the side, that is the toggle function to human supplements. Now, if you toggle it and then you click see nutrient profile again, it is going to give you the amount of different human supplements in order to balance out this recipe. So there's a 
adult multivitamin that's on here. We have calcium phosphate, calcium carbonate, choline, more in light salt. People get confused on that and why it's on there. And it's actually a source of iodine. It's not a source of sodium necessarily within that recipe. It's primarily a source of iodine. And then you're going to have a copper supplement. So multiple supplements here. This wouldn't be what I would consider a minimally supplemented recipe. Now, if you need to know how much balance it plus goes within this recipe, you're going to click the view button. Now the view button setup isn't as visually appealing if you're like me and you like visual graphics. I usually mostly work in the C nutrient profile one because I like the visual aspect of it. But if you want more of a black and white printable version, this is actually a PDF. So if you go to the bottom, there's a little print button and then it will have all of the ingredient amounts and then the supplements. So we're still on the, the human supplements on here. It's gonna have directions on kind of how to prepare things and put everything together. It's going to have your nutrition facts. And then if you look in this little part below, so actually I need to switch it back to balance it for this so that it can tell us the balance it plus. So when you look at the view tab, when you're on balance it, it will actually tell you how much of the balance it plus to add. So if you go balance it canine plus, it can be heated one time. And it gives you the equivalent dose. So equivalent dose would be two and one fourths versus three teaspoons. So the amounts are a little bit different. You can tell just because probably the heat processing or the different types of supplementation that they use within the plus versus the regular. So if you need something that you need to reheat with the vitamin and mineral supplement in it, I would highly recommend going with the balance at plus and make sure you're looking at the equivalent dosing on the view tab. But this Printout also gives you more information about prep, fortification, why they use different options, um, monitoring after transition, storage, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a really great tab. Now, if you are like, I guess the next level of formulation and you wanna know even more about what your dog's recipe means or the different percentages and stuff like that, you can actually go into the nutrient requirements. So this is your full AFCO printout. So if you look over here, this is going to give you your as fed basis. So grams of protein, this is going to give you per 1000 kilocals. So if you were going to look at like minimum AFCO nutrient profiles per 1000 kilocals, this is kind of what you would compare it to. Now, probably the most important parts of this for a healthy pet is knowing if your recipe is high moderate or low in different categories as far as protein, fat, and carbohydrates. So if you look on balance it, you can look at this number here for protein and it says 67 grams. So what does 67 grams mean? Is it high, moderate, or low? So it's important to note that low protein recipes are less than 60 grams per 1000 kilocals moderate protein recipes are between 60 to 90 grams per 1000 kilocals and high protein recipes are greater than 90 per 1000 kilocals. Now, knowing if your dog needs a low, moderate or high protein recipe honestly depends on your dog's nutritional needs and their lifestyle. And I can link a blog post talking about activity level and different life stages and stuff like that. So you can kind of look to see if even though your dog's doing well on this recipe right now, maybe how you might optimize it in the future for the dog, your dog's particular nutritional needs, you can definitely do that. Now, if we go down a little bit, you'll see total fat. So this is the fat right here. Now fat less than 30 is considered low fat between 30 and 50 is considered moderate fat and over 50 grams per 1000 kilocals is considered a high fat diet. So if your dog does seem to like cycle through loose stools, or you seem to notice that there's something weird going on, playing with fat content may be advised. Or if your vet has asked you to keep your dog on a low fat diet, then that's a number that you might want to be looking at. Now, the reason why you may not want to just look at these distribution cat, um, percentages when you're formulating rather than looking at these gram percentages is because Caloric density isn't taken into account when you look at total calories as fed as a distribution versus when you're looking at it per 1000 kilocals, that is actually taken into account. So this is the most accurate way to compare composition for different diets. Now, if we go slightly further down, we can find the carbohydrates within the diet. So in this diet, it is 80 
eight, if we want to round it up, grams of carbohydrates. Now, low carb diets are less than 50 grams. Moderate are between 50 to 90 and high or greater than 90. So if we were going to classify this diet composition, this is a moderate diet across the board. It's moderate protein, moderate fat, moderate carbs. So it kind of is a middle of the road diet all the way down. It's not particularly maybe optimized for a dog that is highly active. It's not for a dog that ha needs restrictions in certain categories due to medical conditions. This is a diet that kind of fits the average, maybe urban or suburban dog's lifestyle. So that's kind of where you look for as far as composition goes. And that is basically the end of our tutorial here as far as creating a recipe using the matching game. In the future, I will go into other recipe options. Balance It does have prescription diets as well. And I can show you guys how to edit and look for those. And then I know that next week, I'm going to talk a little bit about monitoring, storage, setting up a meal plan, and kind of some of the logistical sides of a homemade diet. I honestly might break that into a couple videos depending on how long they are because I don't want to make these too long for you guys where they're a little exhausting. But I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys to set up your first diet. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you did find it helpful or if you are setting up your first recipe on Balance It. Uh, message me on Instagram. You can find me at Canine Health Nut and share your recipe that you've created. I'd love to see them. And of course, if this seems like it's a little bit over overwhelming and you're frustrated or you just have no idea where to start because you don't know what your dog's nutritional needs are, go ahead and message me or email me and we can set up a time to do a chat or a consultation to talk about your dog's individual nutritional needs so that you can actually set up a recipe that's for them. But I hope that you guys had a wonderful time going through this for me. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. If you have questions, leave them below. I'd love to answer them and I will see you next week with the next video.